Today's lesson deals with some ratios that are formed in, when the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse in a right triangle. We're going to start out by talking about mean proportional first of all because it's important that you understand that terminology and that vocabulary before we can move forward with those proportions. So what is the mean proportional? Well the mean proportional has to do of course with proportional and in particular the mean spot in the proportion. It says that when the two means of a proportion are equal either one of those means is called the mean proportional sometimes called the geometric means. For example, in the proportion 2 is to 8 is 8 is to 32, notice that 8 is in the mean spot of each proportion, making 8 the mean proportional between the other two numbers, 2 and 32, in that proportion. So in number 1, where it says find the mean proportional between 8 and 12, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a proportion and then I'm going to fill in some blanks. They're asking me in this example to find the mean proportional. That's what I'm looking for. So that number is going to go in the mean spot in each proportion. In other words, it's going to go in the denominator of one ratio and in the numerator of the other. In order to have the mean proportional, these two numbers in the two mean spots have to be identical. And the two numbers we're trying to find the mean proportional between 8 and 12 go in the two remaining positions in that proportion. So now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. When I cross multiply going in one direction, I get x squared. Cross multiply going in the other direction, 8 times 12, I get 96. Which means x can either be the positive or the negative square root of 96. When we talk mean proportional, it's always going to be a positive number. So we're going to reject the negative root. I know that 16 will go into 96 16 times. Sorry, 16 will go into 96 6 times, making that mean proportional for square roots of 6. And just like we've always done, we're going to leave our answer in simplest radical form. All right, so there's a summary of mean proportion. Let's go ahead and see how we can take a look at this or use this to solve some problems. Important idea to remember is that when the altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse in a right triangle, it forms two triangles that are both similar to the original and to each other. And this is going to create a whole bunch of different types of proportions that we can use to solve problems then regarding the triangles. So this is a right triangle. I'm going to go ahead and put in my right angle at B. B to D is an altitude, meaning that it forms right angles. And I'm going to go label some things, label some parts of these triangles. I'm going to consider first of all the big triangle ABC. In triangle ABC, AB is a leg, BC is also a leg. To differentiate between the two, I'm going to call them L1 and L2, leg 1 and leg 2. A to C is our hypotenuse, which I'm going to label with an H. B to D is an altitude, which I'm going to label with an A. Now notice that BD, our altitude, separates or splits this hypotenuse into two parts. I'm going to call those two parts part 1 and part 2. Notice that part 2 adjoins leg 2. The two of those are connected by vertex C. Part 1 adjoins leg 1, and those two are connected via vertex A. So a ver uh, part 1 and leg 1 will always be attached by a vertex. Part 2 and leg 2 will also always be attached by a vertex. What I want to do now is consider these smaller, similar triangles. So I'm going to draw triangle ADB using the same orientation as the bigger triangle. So vertex A is here, the right angle, vertex D is up here, making vertex B down here. And I'm just going to label from my large triangle or my large picture all the corresponding parts in triangle ADB. So AD was part 1, AB was the altitude, and D to B, sorry, D to B was the altitude, A to B was the first leg. Let me go back and fix that. And I'm also going to draw the other smaller triangle. And again, I'm going to do the same orientation. So the right angle is up here at D. C will coincide with itself, B will be over here. So again, D to B, we said was the altitude from our large picture, 
D to C is the second part, and then B to C was our second leg. All right, so big key idea number one here says the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean between the two lengths or the two parts of the two segments of the hypotenuse. So what this means is if I go to compare and I compare part one to the altitude, that's going to be the same as if I compare the altitude to part two. Notice that this says that the altitude is the geometric mean, and notice that in my proportion here, the altitude is in both means positions. So that says part one over the altitude equals the altitude over part two. The mnemonic that I'm going to give to this ratio is PAP. And you can now use this proportion to solve any types of problems that involve the altitude in a right triangle. All right, key idea number two says the leg of a right triangle is going to be the geometric mean between the length of the hypotenuse and at the same time the length of the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg. So in other words, if we compare in the big triangle the hypotenuse to the first leg, that's going to be equal to the ratio that we get when we compare the first leg to the first part. And again, a big key idea here, notice that the first leg is in the means position in the proportion. If that doesn't occur, you'll know that you set up your proportion incorrectly. Now in similar fashion, we could have gone ahead and compared the hypotenuse to the second leg. And had we done that, we would have had to compare the second leg to the second part. But again, key to notice here, that leg is in the means position in that proportion. The mnemonic that I'm going to give to this is HELP. When I first started teaching this, we called it PLU, but HELP seems a little bit easier to remember. Which proportion you're going to use is entirely dependent upon the information that you're given in the problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two examples. We're given that picture there with the altitude, the right triangle. One piece of information or one hint that I've given my kids in the past, as I said, go to your triangle and highlight the altitude. So in this triangle, we're given an altitude of 10. Since we know the altitude, this is probably going to be a good problem to use PAP with. If we didn't know the altitude or we didn't care to know the altitude, I wouldn't use PAP because PAP is, PAP is a, a proportion that involves using the altitude. But it looks to me like this is going to be a pretty good time to use PAP because I have the altitude, I've got that first part of the hypotenuse, and I'm given that second part of the hypotenuse. So first, and it doesn't matter which part you put where. So I'm going to call the first part X over the altitude 10 equals the altitude 10 over the second part X plus 21. And notice that if I had reversed the positions of these two, x and x plus 21 in my proportion, then when I went to solve it, I would still end up cross-multiplying and still end up multiplying the two together. All right, so when I do cross-multiply going one direction, I've got x times the quantity x plus 21. When I cross-multiply going in the opposite direction, I end up with 100. On the left side, I'm going to distribute x times x is x to the second. x times 21 is 21x. At this point, I've got a quadratic equation. I know that because of this x squared in the problem. So I'm going to make one side equal to 0 by adding or subtracting terms from the other side. At this point, I can either factor or I can do quadratic formula. I'm going to do quadratic formula 
x is equal to negative b, so negative 21, plus or minus the square root of my b, 21 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 100. I'm going to extend my square root to keep my math nice, all over 2 times 1. I'm going to grab my snazzy graphing calculator, and into my graphing calculator, I'm going to put everything I see underneath the square root sign, but not including the square root sign itself. So when I toss all that stuff into the calculator, I end up with 841. And that's still underneath the square root because I haven't taken any square roots yet. I'm going to bring this up here. So x is equal to negative 21. I'm going to go ahead and toss that square root of 841 into my calculator. And when I toss that square root of 841 into my calculator, it spits out at me 29. So negative 21. One of the roots is going to be negative 21 plus 29 over 2. Or in other words, 4. The other of my two roots is going to be that negative 21 subtract 29 over 2. Or in other words, negative 25. Since x represents the length of a side or a length of a part of a side in my triangle, the negative 21 is unsuitable, unacceptable, inappropriate. I'm going to reject that as a potential solution and conclude that my answer here must be 4. All right, last question. I see the right triangle. I see the altitude. So immediately what comes to mind is that this is probably either going to be PAP or it's going to be HELP. I'm going to start by highlighting the altitude. I always highlight the altitude first. In this particular case, I don't know what the length of the altitude is. I'm not being asked to find the length of the altitude. So if I try to employ the same strategy that worked for me before using the PAP ratio, in this particular case, it's not going to be particularly useful. I don't have anything to substitute in here for the altitude. I don't want to find any of that. So I tried that. It didn't work. My next option is going to be to say, hey, maybe I can use that help ratio. I do know the hypotenuse is 12. I do know the length of one of the legs is 6. And that's going to go in both means positions in my proportional, in my proportion. And I'm trying to find the leg that adjoins, or sorry, the part that adjoins that leg. Notice that the x and the 6 attach to each other. So this one's going to be considerably easier to solve than the first one. 12x's are equal to 36, making each x value here equal to 3. All right, so there's one example looking at the proportion PAP and a second example for you looking at the proportion HELP. Like before, I'm going to ask you to summarize the key ideas and the important understandings so that you'll have some idea in your mind of exactly what's important for this video. And then you can give the problems on page uh, 15 a try.